Hi, it's Penny here, and today we're going to be doing my 2021 book battle where we're going to try and work out what was the best book that I've read in 2021. So what I've been doing every month is I have a book battle wrap up where I pair up all the books, I battle them against each other, and I try to come up with the best book of the month. I've done it every month except December because I didn't read any good books in December and I just gave up. But uh, I have best books for all the other months, and so we're going to battle them against each other. What we're going to do is we're going to come up with the best book for each quarter, and then from that we'll battle them to come up with the best book of the year. Now I will note these aren't necessarily the best 11 books that I've read in the year, because some months I've read some really amazing books, and some months I've read some really not so great books. But still, theoretically, the best book of the year should be in these 11. So. Let's get into talking about the books. We're going to start with our January and February books. So we've got The Originals by Brandon Sanderson and Mary Romanette Crowell, up against Blood Air by Alona Andrews. This is always really weird because it feels like so long since I've read The Originals, uh, and I almost feel like it wasn't last year, that it was even longer ago than that, but that's not right. I trust my spreadsheet, so it must have been 2021 that I read this. And this is only available in audiobook, which I actually feel like, even though the audiobook is very well produced, I didn't like the audiobook that much because it has all these sound effects and music in it that I found really distracting, although I know a lot of people will really love it. So this was a collaboration between Brandon Sanderson and Mary Robinette Crowell. I think it was mostly Brandon's idea, but then Mary Robinette Crowell probably did most of the writing. But this is set in a world where you are able to basically view everything through these themes, like everything you perceive is controlled by some chip in your head or something. Um, and so you can put themes on things so you don't necessarily perceive the world like it actually is. In fact, you can make food taste like your favorite food. Uh, anything you eat could taste like your favorite food. Some people put on like cowboy themes and everywhere they go it's like cowboy themed. And you can't really tell how other people are perceiving things either. There is one part that I really liked in this where this woman goes to a place where her and her husband used to go thinking it was very secluded but because she now has her theming off she can now see that it was never secluded there's heaps of other people there it's kind of like an orgy pretty much because there's just people thinking they're having private sex but they're they're all together um so that was really interesting but basically this woman wakes up and she is now a clone of herself and they say you you're your actual version of you, you killed someone. And so you've got like a short amount of time to try and solve this murder. And if you can solve the murder and catch your original self, then you, the clone, can continue your life. So that's a really interesting idea. And I did really like it. It was though very short. And I feel like there were so many interesting ideas in this world that weren't really explored because there wasn't the space to explore them. So I did enjoy it, but I also think they could do a lot more with these ideas. Then we have Blood Air by Alona Andrews. So this is the first book in a new spin-off series set in the Kate Daniels world. Uh, the Kate Daniels books, oh, they're just off screen over here. Um, I have the whole Kate Daniels series. It's 10 books long. I was very upset when that series ended because I really loved it. But I did also think that it came to a very natural conclusion. Uh, this is set in a world where it's like a, a future dystopian world where magic started to come back. But magic comes back in waves. And when magic's working, technology doesn't work and vice versa. So sometimes technology is working, sometimes magic's working, uh, and they can't always predict when things are going to change. And sometimes they get these very big blasts of magic that kind of cause all sorts of chaos. The magic is quite based on beliefs, so all this mythology is kind of coming around. People are turning into mythological creatures. There's also this virus that infects certain people and turns them into shapeshifters. So in a lot of ways, it is kind of that classic paranormal romance style, but the romance isn't too much of a theme. There is romance included in it, and it is a little bit of that alpha bullshit stuff. But I feel like because Kate Daniels is such a strong character, it, it kind of counters that. And she's always standing up against these alpha bullshit guys. But Blood Air is this new spin-off series which is about Kate's adopted daughter. Uh, she was known as Julie in the first series but she's now changed her name and she's known as Aurelia. And she has come back to town after going off and learning all about her magic. 
and she's trying to save her mother but she can't let her know that she's trying to save her. Uh, she's also running into a bunch of people from her past. This is another one where the romance, I'm totally there for it, but it's going to be one where it's slow burn because they used to date, there was some kind of misunderstanding and now we have to like get them to trust each other again. So they're kind of thrown together, they have to work together and you just know, you just know that it's gonna, it's gonna be a thing, but you have to wait. Normally, I'm not a big fan of romance, but this is one where I'm like, so there for it. Uh, I also just really love Alona Andrews' writing style. It's actually like a, a couple duo. Uh, this married couple writes as Alona Andrews. And I love their writing style. They explain like battles and sword fighting and stuff. They explain it so well. The magic system is really interesting. And just seeing all the characters from that original series again was so great. And it kind of just felt like coming home, to be honest. I wish I was as snarky and, and cool as like all of the women in this series, but I am not. But maybe if I read enough of them, maybe I could be one day. Anyway, I really love Blood Air, and if I am putting it up against the originals, even though I think the originals is a much stronger idea, it was very short, it didn't live up to its potential, it didn't explore things as thoroughly as I would have liked, and so for that reason, I am going to pick Blood Air as the winner of this battle. So, we're going to put Blood Air up against the book that I picked for the best book in March, which is Magic for Liars by Sarah Gailey. So in Magic for Lies, we have this woman who is a private investigator and she feels a little bit bitter and twisted because her sister is this very successful magician who teaches at this magic school and she kind of keeps wondering about could her life have been different if it was her who was able to go to magic school and she kind of feels like her sister deserted her family. But then there is a murder at her sister's school and she's asked to come along and help investigate it because they think uh, her connection to her sister and the magic world is going to give her a better perspective in order to investigate this crime. Uh, I really liked how the two stories link together, both the murder mystery and this relationship that she has with her sister. And I think it's the relationship that she had with her sister and the difficulties of them working through that that I really liked the most about the story. I really love Sarah Gailey's writing style and I think the audiobook narration was just superb. I definitely think if you've liked any of Sarah Gailey's other stuff then you will like Magic for Liars, unless you're an edge case. There's always edge cases out there. But I put off reading Magic for Liars for quite a while and I regret it so it's definitely one that I recommend. All of the books in this video are ones that I recommend. Anyway, if I'm putting this up against Blood Air, it's kind of hard because Blood Air has built on this foundation of a 10 book series that I already loved. And so of course those characters are going to stick with me much more just because I already know them, I already love them. But both books kind of have this very, like, I don't know what, like a very distinctive writing style where it's almost kind of like cynical. I don't know, I liked both these books. This is going to be the problem with this whole video that I remember. This is why this video was really hard to film last year because I loved all these books. So how am I meant to pick? I guess we're going to just go with gut feel. So because of that, because I love the characters of Blood Air so much in the whole Kate Daniels world, I'm going to pick Blood Air. I think it's just a really great spin-off and I cannot wait for Alona Andrews to continue the series. So that will make Blood Air the best book that I read in Q1. Now let's get into Q2 and we're going to have The Dragon Keeper by Robin Hobb up against a Amatka by Karen Tidbeck. I'm trying to remember at this point because I've read the whole Rainwell Chronicles of which Dragon Keeper is the first book and also I read Dragon Keeper while I was sick and I basically couldn't get out of bed and I just listened to the audiobook uh, and I, I loved it but also I was sick so I possibly have forgotten more of it than I would have if I hadn't been sick but I've read that whole series now and I loved it. Basically, there have been these dragons born, but the dragons aren't everything that people hope to be. They're causing the town where they've been born a lot of troubles. Uh, so they basically get a bunch of these outcasts who have been deformed by being born in the rain wilds. Sometimes people who are born in the rain wilds, which is kind of like this acidy river. Um, sometimes they're born with like scales and claws and they're told they can't breed. They're kind of treated as outcasts. So they get a bunch of these people and they tell them they're going to be dragon keepers and that they'll be able to go with these dragons, help them make their way up to this mythical city where the dragons will be able to be raised and perhaps these dragon keepers can find a new home. But at the same time, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on. People who don't want them to succeed. Um, there's this leader from another country who is really ill and he believes if he could get some dragon parts that he would be able to use those to heal him. Um, so there's a bunch of people trying to like track down these dragons. 
and steal parts of them. And the dragons themselves are perspective characters and they have their own ideas about what they're hoping to happen when they head towards this mythical city. I really love the perspectives of the dragons. They're very condescending. There's just some parts where they're just roasting humanity so much and I love it. But as I said, I don't remember where this book actually ends. But I guess it doesn't matter. The summary is Robin Hobb is just a master of world building and character development. She puts her characters through so much traumatic stuff, but it just makes you care for them all the more and just really become invested in this journey that you are sharing with them. So, absolutely loved it. Uh, the next book that we have is A Map Kit by Karen Tidbeck. This one is very different from anything I've possibly ever read. It's set in this world where people don't know how they got to this world, but in this world you have to regularly name things or otherwise they will lose their form. So everything has its name written on it, regularly people will rewrite those names and also just like tell things their names. Uh, and we're following this girl who is like a product researcher for this hygiene facility. So she's going from the main colony to this more outer colony to try and research what hygiene products they might need so that her main company can provide what they need potentially. Uh, she's also really depressed though and I really liked what this book did in terms of how it investigated depression and also chronic illness. There's a big section about um, these characters that she's interviewing who have eczema because they work in these mushroom mines and just some of the stuff that was written there was so heartbreaking as someone who suffers from eczema myself and other chronic illnesses. It just was so beautifully written and so accurately expressed the like the feelings of eczema and chronic illness uh, and I mean trigger warnings for suicide and possibly a bunch of other things that I've forgotten at this point um, but also there's like the people who run these colonies basically will just say we're not going to talk about this thing anymore and so there's a bunch of secrets that they're just not allowed to talk about uh, and this girl starts investigating some of these secrets and it just goes in such a strange direction it's very surreal, which I knew right from the beginning that it had the potential to do it right because things don't hold their form if they're not named, which just has so much potential right there. So I really loved the strangeness, but I also felt that the the emotions that were being explored were super relatable as well. So this is another really hard battle because again, as is going to be true for most of these, I love both these books, but I think that because Amatka was just so strange and so emotional for me and just so different from anything I've ever read. Uh, I think because of that I'm going to put a Matka through to the next round which is going to be putting a Matka up against our book for June. So in June I pretty much read the whole series of Giant Days. Uh, this is a graphic novel series about these girls who go to university and just they're having typical university struggles, trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives, dealing with living away from home and making friends and starting relationships and trying to study. Uh, just it's such a fun series but also so real and relatable. The colours are really bright and fun and I wasn't really expecting to like this. I just started reading it for a bit of fun in a readathon and I became so obsessed with these characters, I just really liked hanging out with them. Um, there's a character called McGraw who I kind of love. So yeah, it wasn't anything particularly deep or like mind-blowing, but it was a series that I just really loved. Uh, that said, if I am putting it up against a Matka, this is a slightly easier battle because while Giant Days is 100% fun, a Matka was just so beautiful and unique and just so different that I am going to pick a Mat Cat as the best book that I read in Q2. So we'll do like a, a quarter finals. Anyway, whatever, let's move on to Q3. So for this, our first two books that we're going to be battling against each other is Kindred by Octavia Butler up against Exhalation by Ted Chiang. So Kindred by Octavia Butler, this is a really interesting story. We're following this woman kind of I think in like the 90s and her and her husband have just moved, kind of having a little bit of a hard time of it, and then she gets randomly pulled backwards in time 
to I forget what how far back in time but a time when slavery is rife and because she's a black woman this is not a safe time for her to be in um, but when she goes back in time there's this young boy and she saves his life and she then finds that she keeps getting pulled back in time every time this boy's life is in danger and she keeps having to save him but she also keeps getting stuck back in time and it, it's such I kind of want to say like an awful exploration of the experience of slavery because it's very accurate and also I guess this woman who goes back in time ends up kind of building these relationships with people on either side and liking and disliking people on either side and also like experiencing some really brutal moments um it's very harrowing she comes up with some good ideas for how to deal with these surprise going back in time but of course in the future no one believes this is really happening to her as well so i think it's just like a really relatable and interesting story but also deals with some very good themes and gives you some really good perspective into how things were in the past but also like how we've progressed since then and also how we haven't progressed since then and i say we meaning humanity because one thing i will say this is very u.s centric of course um, because it's set in the u.s i just think this is a really interesting read but also an important read and i did really enjoy it i feel like i had some problems with it but i can't remember what they were anymore so i guess they weren't important uh the other book that we've got in this battle is exhalation by ted chiang so Exhalation is a short story anthology. Te Chang writes these really interesting science fiction short stories. And this one, he's kind of dealing a lot with like parenthood. I'm trying to remember what other stories there were. There was some weird twisty time travel ones as well. Oh, and this one that I loved about these robots that like live on air and one of them starts like dissecting himself to understand how he works. I can't remember the conclusion of that. Oh my God, I want to read it again. I don't know it's really hard because I can't remember all of those stories anymore but I know that I really love them and the ones that I do remember like obviously they've stuck with me for at least six months now and I just really love Ted Chang's writing style the way he writes about these really weird concepts but he just writes about them as if they're true and explains them in such a way that you don't doubt that they're true even though they're like actually incredibly out there ideas that are almost impossible. I do feel like sometimes he's a little bit smart for me but still I got so much out of the short story anthology and I really recommend if you like science fiction short stories that really look at the world in a different way. Ted Chang is your man. So if I'm putting this up against Kindred I do think both of them probably change your perspective of the world a little bit but the short stories in Exhalation definitely blew my mind even more than Kindred so for that reason I'm going to pick Exhalation as the winner of this battle and we're going to put Exhalation up against The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. So Sarah Gailey is the only author that managed to get two books as best books of the month during the year. So The Echo Wife is another science fiction, probably quite a lot of science fictions on this list this year but in this one we basically have clones so people are able to order clones of themselves uh, and we have this woman who created the concept of clones and figured out how to make them happen uh, and unfortunately her husband is an asshole and he has left her and instead is having an affair with her clone so things happen and he ends up dead and so this woman is working with her clone kind of trying to cover up what's happened it is actually quite a slow book because it's more about the investigation of the trauma that these different women have gone through and like this woman learning about herself through getting to know her clone and the differences and similarities between the two of them as well as similarities between what's happening now with her husband and his death and things that happened with her family in the past. So I think it's kind of been labeled, I think, as like a sci-fi thriller. I don't know, there definitely are some thrilling elements, but it's, it's mostly more slower and more of like an investigation of self and trauma. Regardless, once again, it had Sarah Gailey's writing style that I just really love reading from. I think characters just have a way of looking at life that I really relate to. And so I really enjoyed the experience of reading The Echo Wife. However, if I'm putting it up against Exhalation, I would say The Echo Wife didn't really like blow my mind. It was interesting. I really related to it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it had some interesting ideas, but Exhalation, even though I don't think it's actually my favorite Ted Chang short story anthology, um, still, it blew my mind. I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to pick 
Exhalation is the best book that I read in Q3, which means we're up to Q4, which we've only got two months for because I'm writing off December. What a stupid month. Not a fan. Uh, so what books are we going to have for Q4? We've got The Martian by Andy Weir, Up Against a Psalm for the Wild Book by Becky Chambers. This is another two science fictions. How many science fictions were on this list? Seven out of 11 science fictions. Definitely the year for science fiction then. Okay, so these two books. Let's start with The Martian by Andy Weir. This is a very popular, hyped book. It was made into a movie that everybody loves. We've got this man named Mark Watney. He is on a mission to Mars. Unfortunately, things happen. His crew thinks he's died, and so they leave him there. Then when he comes to, he's suddenly stuck on Mars. He has to figure out how he can live, how he can communicate to people that he's still there, and he has so many problems to overcome. I did think, one, that I ruined it for myself by watching the movie first but in the end I was still really invested in what was happening even though I knew what was going to happen. Uh, I was also worried it might be a bit sciencey even though I'm like not afraid of science and a little bit of science but I think it is written in a really digestible way and anytime it gets a little bit too sciencey it jumps to the other planet so it kind of jumps between Mars and Earth and builds a bit of mystery about what's happening on the other planet. It's written in a really humorous way and the pacing just means it's so easy to get through. I flew through it, I couldn't put it down even though I already knew what was going to happen. I can definitely see why a lot of people really like this book. It was just a really easy, fun read and I had a great time reading it. You can tell that Andy Weir did a lot of research about NASA and space travel and it felt very realistic, like almost like it was a true story. Then we have A Psalm for the Wild Built. Now this one, I don't know if I'd describe it as realistic. It's set in a world where at one point robots gained consciousness and they said, goodbye, we don't want anything to do with humans anymore. We're going to go live in the wild. Um, please never talk to us again. And they made this deal that humans would not talk to robots again and humans had to find this way of living at peace with nature. And so it's this really beautiful world where... People can kind of live their lives the way they want to, but everybody's very safe. We're following this person who is not happy with where they are in the city, so they leave to become a tea monk, and they're basically traveling around, making tea for people and listening to their problems. But then they decide that that's still not really giving them what they want, and so they go out into the wild, and they come across this robot. And honestly, it was just a really beautiful story. I love the writing style. It was so lyrical. It's the same kind of writing style, I think, to some of Ted Chiang's science fictions in that it writes about these science ideas or it writes about these ideas as if they're real. And it manages to explain this world to you without, like, explaining it to you. It's more like talking around it and you, you get an understanding about it as they describe the different issues within the world. And I just love that kind of writing and I also think just the the struggle that this team monk's going through trying to find happiness in their life and figure out what they want to do with their life. Maybe that's just really relatable to me at the moment but I just thought it was beautiful. I really love the conversations of this robot like when the robot turned up which takes a little while for the robot to turn up but when the robot turned up I was like what a cool guy. I just love the concept of the robots. Like just when I heard that the robots decided to go out and live in the wild and please humans never talk to us, I love it. So even though I said The Martian was a lot of fun, it didn't really have that same emotional impact to me as A Psalm for the Wild Built. And so for that reason, I'm going to pick A Psalm for the Wild Built as the best book that I read in Q4, which means now we have four best books of the quarter. Not necessarily the four best books of the year, but maybe. But anyway, let's battle them. So for the first half of the year, my two best books were Blood Air by Alona Andrews, and we're putting that up against A Mat Cat by Karen Tidbeck. So these are very different books. Like, I really loved my time with the characters from Blood Air, getting to know them again, getting to see Julie or Aurelia growing up. Just, I'm so glad that the Kate Daniels series isn't over, but Amatka was just so beautiful, so unique, so different, so emotional, so surreal, a whole bunch of like adjective type words. I really loved it and so for that I'm definitely going to pick Amatka as the best book that I read in the first half of the year. Then for the second half of the year we're going to have Exhalation by Ted Chiang up against A Psalm for the Wild Built. Interesting because I was just comparing the two of them right and I think they're science fictions from kind of the same source they're both trying to look at 
how the world could be a better place. And I guess at the same time, investigating some of the problems that we currently have, but like almost in an optimistic way. Is that true of exhalation? Maybe exhalation was less positive than that. But still, it's like taking these science fiction ideas and writing about them as if they're real by writing about the issues that people have in worlds where these things are true. And I think that's the kind of science fiction that is my favorite. However, A Sound for the Wild Built, the writing was also just so much more beautiful. Um, I think Exhalation really made me think, whereas A Sound for the Wild Built, I just felt really cozy and comfortable within this world. I felt like it was slow, but I was enjoying taking my time in the experience. And it's just a book that meant so much to me. So I'm going to pick a Sound for the Wild Built as the best book in the second half of the year. And now we're up to picking the best book of the year. So we have A Mecca by Karen Tidbeck up against A Sound for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. Both of these are very unique science fictions. I love them both. They both made me feel very emotional. I related a lot to both of them. Um, a Sound for the Wild Built has a benefit of being one that I read very recently, whereas A Mecca I read earlier in the year and so like my gut feeling is to go with a sound for the wild built because right now it's just sticking with me so much but i think that's how i felt about a matka at the start of the year you know i feel like actually the best way to do these battles would be to take the final two books and like reread them but i don't have time for that i guess all these books are too good the decisions are all too hard so i was going with gut feel and gut feel would say that I am just so in love with the sound for the wild build. It's such a beautiful tale. The way it's written is just exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to pick a sound for the wild build as the best book that I read in 2021. I don't know if it's entirely true because I read so many good books, but it's definitely one that I loved and it's one that I would recommend. Although again, possibly not for everyone. That's true of every book. What I would love is if you have read any of the books that I talked about in this video, I would love to know what your thoughts are on them, um, whether you like them or not, or whether you're interested in reading them now that you've heard me talk about them. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well and I will see you next time.